Assalamu alaikum. Um, today uh, we have a guest. Um, could you please say your name? Baraka Saleem. Okay, Sweet. so we have um, Mrs. Baraka today. Um, we are going to um, uh, learn the history, um, how she came to Islam, and uh, what are the difficulties she may have faced uh, going through it. When did you accept uh, Islam? Ooh, I think around 1997, I took my Shahada. Okay. So before then, uh, I would assume that uh, you have been born in a Christian family, in is that right? In a Christian right? family, yes, of course. Okay. How did you learn about Islam? Could you, uh, uh, did you know about Islam before you actually uh, accept Islam? Or how, how did you learn? Could you tell us? Well, I have to give you a brief scenario on how I came about Islam before I could tell you how I knew about Islam. Okay, sure, please go ahead. Okay, well, I have to tell you that I was a captain in the United States Army, and I was on one of the missions, which was a Desert Storm, and I was an officer, a captain, and I had a sight because I was a communications officer. And I had a site, and the site was, uh, a sergeant was in charge of that site. Okay. And a Bedouin was coming through the desert in Saudi Arabia with two camels. And as he was coming through the desert, he stopped at my site and he told my sergeant, who's in charge of this site? And when my sergeant told him that a woman was in charge of okay. this site, Okay. He told him could he wanted to meet me. Okay. So the sergeant got on the radio and radioed me and told me that uh, he in fact needed me to be there at that location. At you know, so of course I thought my sergeant had a panic button, and me and my Humvee and my driver, we went to that location, and would you believe that? That Bedouin drove up in a Mercedes Benz. Okay. With two girls in the back, with the hijab on, with the face all covered up. And when he saw me, the only thing he, he was in awe. You could just tell all over his face. Why was that? Because what? I was a woman in charge of all of these men. Okay. And as I drove up in my Humvee with my driver and with the Mercedes Benz, we were laughing that he had a Mercedes Benz and the two women in the back. Well, he gave me this Quran and he told me, all I want you to do is read the El Fataha. But he didn't say El Fataha. He kept saying first chapter. Okay, so he uh, gave you, uh, this is the, can I see it? Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is, uh, this is a copy of the Holy Quran. Looks like it's a, um, it's a copy of the Quran, uh, Musab with uh, Arabic with English uh, translation. And so, um, um, I understand uh, he said that you need to read the first chapter. Yes. So that would be the Surah Fatiha. Surah Al Fatiha. Okay, and then what happened? He left? Then he left. Well, of course, it was a task to get the Quran home in my duffel bag and so forth and so on. But. So that was uh, in what year? In 97? No, that was in 91. So that was in 1991? That was in 91. Okay. That was in 91, okay. because that's when Desert Storm was. And then I was called out of the military because of a family trauma, and I had to regroup okay. out of Detroit. We had to move from Detroit to Mississippi. Okay. Once I moved to Mississippi, now all, I'm out of the Army, my family's in trauma, I don't know what to do, all my instincts come up, I become a gangster. Okay. Because that's what I was before I went to the military, coming oh. out of Detroit. Okay. I hustled. 
Okay. I knew how to we put put it in the grind, put it in the grind, which is how to make money. And my family was into dump trucking. But what I did was I guess I put myself out there and I met this young man. Well, he wasn't young, he was older than me. And he was into Islam. And I asked him about this book. So you still had that book. Did you ever read that first chapter or not, not, not yet? No, no, not after I left the desert. Okay, so this book was given to you, the Quran copy was given to you, you brought it home with you, but you, you still had it, but you didn't go through it yet? No. Okay, and then you met this I, man? I met this man. Okay. And... That was in what year? That was in 97. 97, okay. That was in 97. And he introduced me to Al-Islam. Was he, was he a Muslim? He was Muslim. Okay. He was Muslim, and the way in which I come in, and I have to say, the way in which I come into Islam, I guess is different, but a whole lot of us do come into Islam the same way, which is coming from the streets. Okay, what does that mean? Living in the streets, meaning having dealings with uh, people in crime, uh, uh, I guess, in the hood. I don't want to just say it outright, just say in the hood. Okay, okay. Okay, so uh, in the hood, a lot of things go on. Mm -hmm. And it has to have, it has to have some standards. Okay. And if you don't have no standards to it, then you have a, you got a big mess, like a, uh, well, just like a big mess. Okay, and so what happened to, what happened after you met that man who, uh... He brought yeah. me to uh, Islam and I was the first to take Shahada at Masjid Muhammad. So how long did it take uh, for you to take the Shahada after he invited you? I watched him. Okay. I watched him. So... I watched him for almost about two years. Two years. And just watched the way in which he handled himself, the way in which he handled me. Okay. The way he prayed. Okay. Um, his his char character. And and then that's when I had read the Al Fatiha, but I was trying to see it in, in place and in working. I was introduced to a man by the name of Man Worthy Muhammad. Okay. And he has his, I think it's called his Methab. Net that is his philosophy of thinking. Okay. And he believed that all 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 men, women created equally can talk to God or Allah mm -hmm. when you want to, how you want to, lay your burdens down when you want to. Right. Well, my my plight because I was under the impression that coming from knowing the Bible, mm -hmm. knowing the Torah, my impression is that the Fatahat encompassed all of that. Okay. It was all in one, in that one chapter. And once I read it, and then I learned it in Arabic, and then I started being around the people, that had accepted Islam and and embraced that they were Muslims first. So um, I'm trying to understand, like, uh, you have been uh, born into a Christian family. Mm -hmm. So in your mind, like, what is, what is the difference between uh, when you have been Christian versus what is, how it is now as uh, Muslims? Oh, from my perspective, is the only thing that's different is that Jesus. Jesus, I look at Jesus as a prophet. When you when you have been Christian, you have to pray through Jesus. Right. And see, uh, that's like you have to go to another man. We have a lot of plights as uh, African-American uh, because we're on two fronts. 
when it comes to that. Um, okay. Um, because we we first we gotta lift ourselves up. Right. Oh. Once we lift ourselves up, then we have to get to know that we're just as equal as the next man. Then once you're just as equal as the next man, then you got to realize that you can call on Allah just like the next man. But they have beaten us down to the point that we think we got to go through somebody to get to, I guess, to the riches of Allah. Uh, did you have any difficulty uh, uh, in uh, adjusting to your family or society? Well, my family accepted, they accept me. But because I'm a leader, so we have to go back. And I, the biggest problem I have right now is that Friday is Juma, and they know that I'm trying to catch a ride. They know that I'm trying to do my prayers. They know that there's no pork. I'm not eating no pork. Mm -hmm. They know there's no alcohol. Right. You know. You know, they know all my rules. Once they, once I set up all my rules, now we laugh about them. They make jokes about them, but it's still, they're not going to press me or, okay. or do anything. But that's because that type of arrangement we have in our household. By that, I would uh, assume that not everybody in your household or family is uh, yet uh, uh, Muslim. No. But you get along just fine. We get along just fine. But I I do, I do, I do get on them about praying through Jesus. I say, why don't you just ask God? <laughs> okay. That's, uh, so did they, did they um, answer the question? No, usually we laugh about it. Okay. Uh -huh. Now my dad, he'll go on a, he'll go on a rave and tell me that uh, Jesus brought the message in, you know, uh, the parable that Jesus brought the message and right. you pray through me and, you know, we'll just pray pray to God, you know. As Muslim, we believe that everybody is equal and everybody is uh, born, when they are born, they are born with the fitra, which is uh, the Islam. Uh, Muslim does not mean that uh, someone is a follower of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Muslim, a Mus by definition, Muslim means uh, someone who submits to the will of God and they worship only God and nobody else. I know that you are um, uh, active, very active in uh, the, the Muslim community and also in the mosque. Are you inviting other people to Islam? Well, right, right now, I'm being tested within myself because of my because of my illness. Okay. I'm a disabled veteran and uh, I'm going through little, little tests of my own, but the kids in my neighborhood, um, I have them over at my house and I'm always giving dawah to them, especially when it comes to discipline and making their standards. See, the, we got to catch them young because if we don't catch them young, they get too old, then we won't be able to do anything with them. Exactly. But um, I'm giving them standards, and the standards that I'm giving you, giving, giving them, I can see them coming out in them. So the only dialogue that I can do at this present time, because my school, oh, I'm so I, I love my school at MIC, but I can't get there. Uh. The last question I have uh, to you is that, what is a suggestion uh, to all the Muslims regarding like how we present the Islam to the world? Uh, nowadays, um, we, we are supposed to define Islam. We are Muslims and we are supposed to define Islam. But, but the problem is that Islam is being defined by people who are not Muslim and they have different agenda. And uh, 
media has their own agenda. So someone does bad things in the name of Islam becomes standard of Islam in their eyes. Well, I have to say that I be in that scenario all the time because we call it being messy. Only thing I can tell you is that I'm scared and I got a right to be scared and I'm a warrior. I've been in two wars, mm -hmm. you know, but I do know that um, we, uh, we could, only thing we could do is stay prayed up and try to be honest with one another and uh, be good to each other and formulate a, uh, a wall to combat this evil. Yeah, so you, you made a good point that um, if we are Muslims, then we have to live by uh, the rules of uh, Islam. So people can see that uh, I call myself Muslim and then also they can see my character. So it's all on us to show the people what the Islam is. If we do not live by uh, the, the message of Islam, then it's on us. Uh, if, if, if the the Islam is portrayed in a bad way, it's us who need to correct. Nobody is going to correct that for us. So um, I thank you, Sister, Var Sister Varaka. I thank you very much uh, for uh, your time to give us uh, your story and perspective. Uh, and uh, for the viewers, uh, thank you for listening uh, to the story of Sister Varaka. And, um, in the future, we will come up with uh, some new episodes. Um, we will have uh, these uh, episodes uh, uh, of people who reverted to Islam uh, from other religions. Uh, thank you for watching. Goodbye.